If I could have your attention, please. If I could have your attention, please. The supplemental calendar is now out. All of the materials that you will need are outside the uh, middle door, outside the chamber, and upstairs and outside 341. It's your responsibility to get them. So we're going to take another couple of minutes for everybody to get what they need, and then we're going to turn this train loose. All right, we're going back to the rules calendar. Going back to the rules calendar, I will uh, give you a little update. That I understand that our friends across the hall have already left for the day. We will continue to serve the people of Georgia here. 
as the house does. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 272. House Bill 272 by Representative Ballinger of the 23rd to be entitled Act to Amend Chapter 11 of Title 15 of the Official Code of George Annotator relating the Juvenile Code so as to change the jurisdiction of the Juvenile Court to include children who are under 18 years of age. This bill having referred to the Committee on Juvenile Justice, that committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes Chairman Ballinger to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I appreciate, uh, I've come to you uh, to present House Bill 272. Uh, this basically raises the juvenile court jurisdiction age to include 17 year olds. A lot of y'all think 17 year olds, if you get arrested as a 17 year old, you go to uh, juvenile court. That's not true in the state of Georgia. We're one of three states with this horribly antiquated practice of treating 17 year olds like grown ups. Um, so this right here raises the juvenile court age. So 17 year olds would actually go to juvenile court where they belong. Um, that's what the bill does. What the bill does not do is it does not let 17 year olds off it does allow them to go to seven to juvenile court, which is a more rehabilitative process, uh, but they're much more like much much less likely to reoffend. A 17-year-old charged with a serious offense would still go to state or superior court. 123 counties had fewer than 50 arrests of 17-year-olds, so we're only talking one a week. Um, so the numbers are not that great. Uh, nor is it an unfunded mandate. I sit on public safety appropriations, and over the last three years, we have increased. Uh, funding for dedicated prosecutors for our juvenile courts and also our public defenders for juvenile court. Mr. Speaker, that is the bill. I know we have a long calendar in front of us. That is the bill in essence, and I will stand for any questions. You do not appear to have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I urge your favorable consideration of this important measure. Thank you. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to withdrawing the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is withdrawn. Is there any objection to adopting the substitute offered by the committee on rules? The chair hears none. The rules committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 272 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of House Bill 272. The ayes are 113, the nays are 51. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 291. House Bill 291 by Representative Dempsey, the 13th to be entitled an act to amend Code Section 23411 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating the definitions regarding tuition equalization grants at private colleges and universities. This bill I have referred to the Committee on Higher Education. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes Chairman Dempsey to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. House Bill 291 keenly focuses 
on a concern here that is so important to the state of Georgia, dealing with our workforce, our healthcare workforce. This will allow for the expansion of nursing students. In 2011, during that legislative session, House Bill 326 was passed and signed, and this changed the eligibility criteria for private colleges and universities qualifying for the tuition equalization grant. Specifically, it grandfathered in all eligible institutions at that time, but made it practically impossible for new institutions to qualify. So this legislation will amend that code section and provide that in addition to the 34 current private colleges and universities that are eligible, also very, very strict, tight, tightly drawn, this is so very tightly drawn, it took us two years to do it, the opportunity to, to allow award recipients 317 per quarter or $475 per semester to help them go to college and become nurses and take care of Georgia's needs. Mr. Speaker, if there are any questions, I will yield. You have no questions. Thank you. Then I yield the well and ask for your favorable support. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 291. The ayes are 169, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 343. House Bill 343 by Representative Rhodes of the 120th to be entitled an act to amend code section 2731 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating requirements of permission to hunt on the lands of another, written permission, enforcement, and immunity of a landowner from civil liability. This, this bill I'm referred to the Committee on Game, Fish, and Parks. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by rules committee substitute. Chair recognizes Chairman Rhodes to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have before you tonight um, House Bill 343. It's the Rules Substitute LC 441699S. Uh, Mr. Speaker, what this bill does is basically uh, we've had some pockets of poaching uh, that that has gotten worse around the state, and we're basically just trying to decrease the ripple effect. They're doing it one time and getting away with it, and they just they keep on and on. And we're increasing the fines on the second and third offense, and that is all this measure does, Mr. Speaker. I'll be glad to answer questions. You have a question if you care to yield. I yield for one. Chair recognizes the minority leader of the House, Leader Beverly, to your left for a question. The gentleman yield. Yes, sir, Mr. Leader. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Uh, line 46, can you tell us what the rebuttal presumption is? Line 46, I don't have a line 46. Well, I left it on my desk. What does it say? This, this, this. I hate is, it when that happens, don't this you? This is the, uh, this, no, this is the outdated LC. That's why I don't have it. But thank you for the question. I'll let you tell me what it means. <laughs> Do you further yield? You've got a bunch of questions. Mr. Speaker, the night's going to be long. I yield the well. The gentleman yields the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to withdrawing the committee substitute? 
The chair hears none. The committee substitute is withdrawn. Is there any objection to adopting the substitute offered by the committee on rules? The chair hears none. The committee the rules committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. All members voted. Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 343. The ayes are 172, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Resolution 183. House Resolution 183 by Representative Knight of the 130th Urgent Congress of the United States to pass a Recovering America Wildlife Act. This, this resolution has been referred to the Committee on Game, Fish, and Parks. That committee recommends that this resolution be adopted. Chair recognizes Chairman Knight to present the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a, a simple urging resolution that Congress adopt. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, America um, Recovering America's Wildlife Act. Basically what it does is it makes a dedicated funding for our states uh, in an annual allocation of $1.3 billion to state-based conservation and Georgia would be al uh, eligible for more than $25 million so that we could implement our state wildlife action plan. If there's any questions, Mr. Speaker, I'll be glad to answer them. If not, I'll ask. Looks like you have one question if you uh, care to yield. I will. Chair recognizes the Minority Caucus Whip, Representative Wilkerson to your left. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? Uh -huh. um, I guess we do these urging resolutions, and do they ever respond to us when we ask them? Well, I don't know. We we hope that they will in this case because we're trying to make keep Georgia wild. So, if not. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I yield the well. Keep Georgia wild. Can we put that on our tags? Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this resolution now be adopted? All those in favor of the adoption of the resolution will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. On the passage of House Resolution 183, the ayes are 171, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Resolution 248. House Resolution 248 by Representative Stevens is the 164th of resolution designated the Savannah Logistics Technology Innovation Corridor as an official technology innovation corridor in Georgia. This resolution having been referred to the Committee on Economic Development and Tourism, that committee recommends that this resolution be adopted by committee substitute. Chair recognizes Chairman Stevens to present the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the House, H.R. 248 does one simple thing. It takes the current designated Savannah Logistics Technology Innovation Corridor, which is a mouthful, and just makes it an official technology innovation corridor. What we found with the explosion of the ports, 
um, that the sometimes the, the connectivity, if you will, with the universities, the hospitals, the manufacturers, the rails, the warehouse, trucking, there's just not a logistics hub. And this is all this does is it makes it an official technology hub, opens it up for federal grants and that kind of stuff. So I'll accept any questions if there are any. You do not have any questions. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this resolution now be adopted? All those in favor of the adoption of the resolution will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of House Resolution 248. The ayes are 172. The nays are zero. This resolution, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore adopted. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 117. House Bill 117 by Representative Wilinski, the 79th and others to be entitled an act to amend code section 312A18, the official code of Georgia annotated relating the low THC oil patient registry. This bill I refer to the Committee on Regulated Industries. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes Representative Walensky to present the bill. Thank you, Speaker. Today I present House Bill 117. Uh, this is a simple bill that as to the oil, cannabis oil registry, ulcerative colitis, we already have Crohn's on that list, and Crohn's and coli ulcerative colitis are so interlinked that it's a common sense fix, and uh, I'll accept any questions. You do have a question if you care to yield. I'll yield. Chair recognizes Representative Holland in the gallery to your right for a question. Does the gentleman yield? I yield. Is it not true that this representative suffers from this disease and is really grateful that there will be an alternative to invasive and sometimes harmful treatments that are often considered for it? The lady knows what she speaks. Thank you for bringing this forward. No further questions. Thank you so much, Speaker. And we've talked about the turtle on the fence post, and thanks to all of you all here today, I am the turtle. I ask for your favorable consideration. I yield the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of House Bill 117. The ayes are 170, the nays are two. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 454. House Bill 454 by Representative Newton of the 123rd to be entitled an act to amend code section 3320C2 of the official code of George Annotator relating to online provider directories so as to provide for certain coverage requirements concerning providers that become out of network during a planned year. This bill having referred to the Special Committee on Quality Health Care, that committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee. Rules Committee substitute. Chair recognizes Chairman Newton to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and colleagues. When you look and find a vehicle advertised in Georgia, you'll often, and you see a price, you'll also often see a stock number beside that car or that truck. That's because 
of the Fair Business Practices Act, the anti-bait-and-switch uh, act that's enforced by the Attorney General to make sure that what they're offering for sale, they actually are going to sell you and they have on the lot available. Unfortunately, with health insurance, even though some of them cost as much as a good used car annually, when a consumer during open enrollment chooses a health plan because of a particular in-network provider, the consumer can find themselves midway through the next year, even though they're paying their premiums on time and in full, they can find that that, that provider was canceled and no longer part of their health plan. They're stuck with out-of-network bills um, if they want to continue seeing that or they got to change on short notice to a new provider that's in network. What HB 454 will require health plans to continue coverage at the in-network rates and it will also require the providers to accept that as payment in full. We've worked hard to keep the consumer out of the middle when large insurers and providers have disagreements. Um, we worked hard with the insurance plans to make sure this was fair to everybody if a provider canceled themselves or had quality reasons to be canceled. We have exceptions. I think this is a good bill for us to take one more step to leave con consumers out of the middle when they're doing everything they can do and try to give them affordable health care. So I'd appreciate your support and I'll yield the will. Gentleman has yielded the well over a question from Representative Al Williams. You want permission to return? Granted. Chair recognizes Representative Al Williams to your left for a question. Will the running uh, will the representative <laughs> yield? The running doctor will, will yes, I will yield. I was just I rose to just make a correction. Is it not true that Healthcare premiums are usually higher than a new car. They're up there. It's 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 nip and tuck depending on how uh, how, how what you decide to get. Well, believe me, it's cheaper for a real Cadillac than it is the Cadillac plans that are out there. Well, I'd appreciate but, your support. Thank sir. you, sir. You've been. Thank you. Leave if there are no more questions, <laughs> I'll yield the will. Gentleman has yielded the will. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to withdrawing the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is withdrawn. Is there any objection to adopting the substitute offered by the committee on rules? The chair hears none. The rules committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye, those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. <clears throat> Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 454. The ayes are 173, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 495. House Bill 495 by Representative Crow, the 110th, be entitled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 3, Title 35, and Article 2 of Chapter 1 of Title 42 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating the general provisions regarding the Georgia Bureau of Investigation and the Sexual Offender Registration Review Board. This bill I referred to the Committee on Public Safety and Homeland Security. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes Representative Crow to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, this is a GBI department bill uh, that's basically codifying a practice that's already in place uh, in 2012, there were several investigator positions that were transferred to the GBI from the Sexual Offender Registration Review Board, or SORB. Um, those were classified as analyst positions, but budget cuts in the fall of 2019, GBI had to eliminate all but two of those positions. Uh, this reduced the amount of work the GBI was able to provide. Uh, during the 2020 legislative session, House Bill 720 was introduced, and if passed, this legislation would have transferred one of these positions from the GBI to SORB 
along with changing the nature of the GBI's responsibilities related to SORB. Uh, that bill did not pass, it passed the House, was unfortunately unable to make it through the Senate. But the fiscal year budget, uh, fiscal year 2021 state budget still reflected the transfer of funds for one of those positions to SORB from the GBI. Um, the one remaining position at GBI is still gonna be kept and utilized for filling criminal history requests for SORB. They're unable to gather background information so the GBI will do that for them, provide the report to the uh, SORB for their review, and that's essentially the bill, and I will yield for questions. You have a question if you care to yield. I will. Uh, Chair recognizes Representative Ridley to your right for a question. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, sir, I do. You don't get to change your mind after you know who it is. Yes, sir. You done a great job reading whoever wrote that for you, Thank uh, you. but I got a. I just got one question. Yes, sir. Does this bill have anything at all to do with having to get a driver's license to dri operate a boat? Nothing whatsoever. I'm done. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. No further questions. All right, I'll yield the will. Is Thank there you. any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee? which was favorable to the passage of the bill. The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of House Bill 495. The ayes are 172, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption. The House Bill 532. House Bill 532 by Representative Workheiser, the 157th to be titled an act to amend Title 34 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to labor and industrial relations so as to change certain provisions relating to the Department of Labor and Employment Security. This bill then referred to the Committee on Industry and Labor. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes Chairman Workheiser to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, for one, are okay with the Senate going home early. These are the bills that the state is interested in. Just hope they're ready to get to work tomorrow. This is the annual uh, G Georgia Department of Labor Agency bill. Uh, section one just gives some consistency on service, notice service, and the rest of the bill is an update from the United States Department of Labor, uh, mostly striking code that's been in for some time. I'll stand for any questions. Do not have any questions. Thank you. I'd ask I'm for sorry, your... you do Whoops. have a question. Okay. I'll yield. Chair recognizes Representative Hughley to your left for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, ma'am. Will this help the Department of Labor process claims any faster than they're doing now? Ma'am, I've, I've already told you more than what I know. Um, we hope so. I, I, need, I need a minute to break that sentence down. <laughs> Is that a no? That's, that's for no, every No member. further questions. Uh, I appreciate your favorable consideration. Thank you. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines.
Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 532. The ayes are 165, the nays are 5. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will, read, clerk will read the caption, House Bill 469. House Bill 469 by Representative Stevens, the 164th, to be titled an act to amend Article 2, Chapter 7 of Title 48, the official code of Georgia annotated relating the imposition rate and computation and exemptions from state income taxes. This bill I have referred to the Committee on Ways and Means. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by Rules Committee substitute. Chair recognizes Chairman Stevens to present the bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, today I bring you House Bill 469, which does, uh, on the first section of the bill, extends the historic tax credit, the mega historic tax credit, there are two of those, uh, for one year. It expires this year, and we need to care for an, an additional year at the current rate. It also does not mess with the, um, the historic tax credit that is your standard, like for small homes and small businesses. We also found out late that we're on a short list for an economic development project here. Some of you might have possibly seen one of the um, test vehicles out in the street there. It's on section two. It's um, for an electric vehicle. It says that if you domicile here in Georgia, and if you're willing to create the jobs, we'll give you $2,500 per vehicle uh, for a short period of time uh, with a cap of five million, and we're going to let it expire in 2024. We're on a short list. I hope it goes to every one of your districts if we make it there. But ladies and gentlemen, today, this is a carrot. I hope you'll vote for the bill. Are there any questions? There are no questions. For what purpose does Representative Kennard rise? Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Isn't it true that Section 2 of uh, 469 would allow electric vehicles to come more steadily in our uh, state? It's, which is an environmentally friendly measure as well as a job creator. If the gentleman so states. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none, the previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to withdrawing the committee substitute? The chair hears none, the committee substitute is withdrawn. Is there any objection to adopting the committee to substitute offered by the committee on rules? The chair hears none, the rules committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. For what purpose does Representative Carson rise? Uh, Madam Speaker, pursuant to Rule 133, I ask to be excused from this vote. The gentleman has that right. The clerk will reflect it in the record. Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of the bill. The yeas were 167, the nays were zero. The bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. The clerk will read the caption to House Bill 160. House Bill 160. House Bill 160 by God. House Bill 160 by Representative Bodie to be entitled an act to amend Article 4 of Chapter 8 of Title 48 of the Fish Code of Georgia Annotated relating to water and sewer projects and cost tax so as to redefine the term municipality. This bill I refer to the Committee on Ways and Means. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. The Chair recognizes Representative Bodie to present the bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I rise today and ask this House to vote yes to HB 160, basically what HB 160 will allow 
for the cities of East Point, College Park, and Hapeville to levy the most sales tax. The most sales tax is the municipal option sales tax was first implemented and passed by this house in 2003. The city of Atlanta implemented that tax and it allows for our wastewater systems to be upgraded in the city of East Point, College Park, and Hapeville. The reason why this bill is, is so important is because the city of College Park is where the airport is located. The city of College Park needs about $18 million uh, to upgrade their system, and we will be able to do that. Also at East Point, which is right outside of the College Park or right next to College Park in the airport, the need is needed there as well. So what the most sales tax would do it will allow for us to upgrade our wastewater and sewage infrastructure that is going to be a great need to the airport, which is the crown jewel of not only the state of Georgia, but the south, the southern region itself. Madam Speaker, I will yield for any questions. You have a question? Yes. Uh, Representative Bentley has a question. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, to my dear friend. Is it not true that I serve on the Ways and Means Committee? Yes, you do, ma'am. And is it not further true that I was unfortunately not present at the time of your um, presentation of your bill in the Ways and Means Committee, but had I been there, I would have voted for your bill to come out of committee? The lady knows what she speaks. Thank you for your work on this legislation. There are no more questions. Thank you. I yield the well. The gentleman has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no. And the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas were 167, the nays were two. The bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. The clerk will read the caption to House Bill 681. 681. House Bill 681 by Representative Yurt of the 152nd to be entitled an act to amend part two of article six of chapter two of title 20 the official code of Georgia annotator relating to competencies and core curriculum relative to quality basic education so as to provide for a course of study in financial literacy for students in 10th or 11th grade. This bill I refer to the Committee on Education. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. The chair recognizes Representative Yurta to, pr to present the bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Tonight I rise to bring you uh, House Bill 681. Uh, this is uh, asking the State Board of Education shall prescribe a program of study in financial literacy. And this is to be completed in high school. The goal behind this bill is to help students develop basic understanding of financial literacy. A strong foundation in financial literacy can help with life goals, using debt responsibly, savings, retirement, even running a business. Also learning basic skills like household budgeting or balancing a checkbook are important in this course and can be very valuable later in life. Today it's estimated that four out of five U.S. workers live paycheck to paycheck. Lacking skills in financial literacy can lead to poor credit, uh, bankruptcy, even foreclosure. The skills learned in a financial literacy course will prove valuable to the rest of the students' lives. Uh, to help make, this will even help make them build wealth and be less vulnerable to fraud. Uh, a number of things in the bill that we've outlined to, to teach in the course are balancing a checking account, like I mentioned, money management such as saving, spending, credit scores, and managing their debt, investments, uh, post-secondary educational financial planning, even completing a loan application, simple contracts and types of savings and investments, and the value of compounding interest. 
We've worked uh, with the Department of Education uh, to make it flexible for the school systems so they could work within the framework of the existing courses offered by the school system. In other words, instead of taking economics, for example, they could take the financial literacy course. So I think it's a good bill. I think it'll prove very valuable to students and be very, very uh, helpful later in life to, to them in the future. Thank you for letting me present the bill, and I'll entertain any questions. You have a question. Uh, the chair recognizes Representative McLaurin for a question in the gallery. Okay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Will the gentleman yield? I will. Mr. Representative, isn't it true that if I had had access to a course like this in high school, I would have been smart enough not to run for the Georgia House of Representatives? <laughs> if the gentleman believes that to be true. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The, the, you have a... Uh, the chair recognizes Representative Bentley for a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, ma'am. How does this bill affect the funeral industry? Well, I would hope they would be able to set aside money for that if it occurs later in life. <laughs> Is there any language in your bill that helps individuals to understand the importance of having life insurance? I would think that would be very valuable, and we could work on that in the future. All righty, thank you for your work on this bill. Yes, ma'am. Chair recognizes Representative Wilkerson for a question. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, I will. So I guess, um, who's gonna teach this class? I'm, I'm trying to think of the practical experience, like who's gonna have the experience to be able to teach about tax assessments and um, different things that are on here? Is that well, gonna be your history I, I, I would think maybe some economics teachers or something like that and I envision even getting people to come in from the community and and you know helping with the course also maybe bankers uh, could do a, a day or, or or even accountants or something like that to come in on special occasions like that does the gentleman further yield yes I will so is your expectation that a teacher will bring in um, expertise on calculating taxes and different things, or, or would they be able to incorporate that inside? I'm well, just concerned about I, I don't know how deep and detailed they'll get with that, but I think that uh, they could get the basics and, you know, just let people know that they need to set aside money for taxes and make sure enough's taken out of their paychecks and things like that. Well, after a most thorough uh, discussion, would the gentleman like to continue to yield? I will uh, yield the well. The gentleman has yielded the well. And I thank you for your consideration on this bill. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? Chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of the bill. The yeas were 169, the nays were two. The bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption of House Bill 631. 
House Bill 631 by Representative Chokos and 138th to be entitled an act to amend code section 35333 of the official code of Georgia annotator relating to powers and duties of the Georgia Crime Information Center so as to provide for the development and operation of a system to voluntarily collect and disseminate information relating to conditions that may impede an individual's ability to communicate with law enforcement. This bill has been referred to the Committee on Public Safety and Homeland Security. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. The chair recognizes Chairman Chokas to present the bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members of the House of Representatives, I bring before you today House Bill 631. This legislation will allow local governments with emergency 911 systems to collect, store, and disseminate information that is voluntarily submitted by parents or guardians of individuals that have a physical, mental, or neurological condition that impedes his or her ability to communicate. Um, during the committee process, there was no opposition that I'm aware of. This measure has no fiscal impact to the state. This measure will allow parents or guardians with autistic children or adults to voluntarily submit this information to their local E911 centers. First responders will have this information in the database and will be better prepared to deal with the occupants of the, res of the residents. This measure improves public safety and will bring peace of mind to the parents of individuals with autism and other developmental disabilities. And Madam Speaker, I will yield for uh, questions if there are any. Otherwise, I'll yield the will. There are no questions. Thank you. I ask for your favorable consideration. The gentleman has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no. And the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of the bill. The yeas were 169, the nays were one. The bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 562. House Bill 562. House Bill 562 by Representative Carpenter, number fourth, and others to be entitled to an act to amend Article 3, Chapter 4, Title 17, the official code of Georgia Annotator relating to warrants for arrest, so as to add defects, case managers to the people for whom arrest warrants may be issued only by certain judicial officers. This bill I'm referred to the Committee on Judiciary and Non-Civil. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes Representative Carpenter to present the bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This is not my favorite bill I'm carrying today, but I will report that House Bill 562 is a bill that will help protect defects workers when they're performing their uh, work. We do that currently with teachers, peace officers, law enforcement officers, and school administrators, and all we're asking is for a little extra vetting when issuing warrants while they're performing their job. And I appreciate uh, your favorable consideration on this bill. There are no questions. Up. Oh. There is one question. Uh, I'll yield for one. The chair recognizes Representative Hutchinson in the gallery for a question. There we go. We got some. Okay. I'm sorry. Does the gentleman yield? Absolutely. Can you give us an example of what this bill, a situation that this would, this would help? Yeah, absolutely. So we passed this bill. I think you actually voted for it last year. We passed it out of the House. It got hung up in the Senate. But basically, we had some issues where defects workers were going to perform uh, their, their task at a, at a home with police officers there. And then a member of that home issued, went to magistrate court and issued a warrant. Uh, and made him come to court basically and at the end of the day that the magistrate judge didn't do a whole lot of research on it He just went ahead and made him come in. So this is just saying uh, we want this to be vetted a little more 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you, House. We look forward to your favorable consideration. The gentleman has yielded the well. For what purpose does Representative Cantrell rise? He waves. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no. And the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas were 170, the nays were zero. The bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 464. House Bill 464. House Bill 464 by Representative Scoggins of the 14th to be entitled an act to amend Title 29 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia and Tender relating guardian and ward. So as to provide for when a petition for the appointment of a temporary guardian of a minor filed in the probate court may be transferred from the probate court to the juvenile court. This bill I referred to the Committee on Juvenile Justice. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes Representative Scoggins to present the bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I bring to you House Bill 464, and this is a really simple, easy bill. Uh, this bill just allows the probate judge of any county to transfer a temporary guardianship of a minor to a juvenile court so that the juvenile court can do a home study or a background check. The way the law is currently written is the probate judge shall issue the order granting the temporary guardianship, and this just allows them to move this to juvenile court where there can be a background check on and a home study. And I'll ask for your favorable consideration, and I'll yield for any questions. There are no questions. Thank you. The gentleman has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas were 163, the nays were zero. The bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. The chair recognizes the rules chairman for an announcement. Okay, I guess we'll stay at about two o'clock this morning. <laughs> See how that goes. Um, rules committee will meet uh, in about two minutes, and we're going to add just three or four, five, six, ten more bills <laughs> to, the, to this uh, calendar tonight. And oh, by the way, just for your information, Rules Committee will not meet tomorrow morning, but we will meet in about two minutes. The House will stand in recess for five to seven minutes. <laughs>